everybody. Thank you a lot to come from uh, at FOSDEM. Um, today uh, we'll, we'll see a presentation about storing metrics at scale with Doki. Thank you. Thanks. Hi everyone. So today I'm going to talk to you about uh, Nyoki, which is thanks, a uh, charm server database. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce myself briefly. So I'm Julian. I work at Red Hat for a bit more than a couple of years now. I mainly work on OpenStack, which is written in Python, as you might know. So OpenStack is a cloud computing platform for those who don't know. Uh, so you're supposed to run a lot of virtual machines and a lot of computers. Uh, I've a lot of free and open source stuff uh, since 15 years now, um, and a lot of Python these last years. So today I'd like to talk about what Nuki is and uh, why we created it, because I don't like to create projects for nothing. Uh, how does it work, uh, what it does, how it does it. Um, it's in Python, so it might be interesting for you guys. And um, how to use it, uh, because, well, you can use it in Python too, so it may be interesting. So what's it? Um, so it's a time series database, so I can imagine most of you knows what a time series is, but it's basically uh, storing a, a suite of points uh, composed of two things, a timestamp and a value, and then you can create uh, nifty graphs and nifty charts to uh, show things. So uh, the first value in a time series is timestamp. There's nothing very surprising, and the other value is going to be anything you want to to measure, to meter, so it would be the temperature in a room or the CPU usage of a computer in our case. Um, so in the context of the OpenStack project, which is a scalable um, cloud platform, at least in theory, uh, we needed something to store metrics of a lot, a lot of virtual machines, volumes, networks, everything you can imagine in infrastructure. So we need something which was scalable, uh, which is not something you can find easily. A lot of software out there are not designed to run on a lot of computers. So but that's something we wanted to, to find. We wanted something that was easy to use. So everything in OpenStack is controlled by API. And so we wanted a time server database that was uh, program, programmable against, uh, something you could use to write programs, query, and um, do things like uh, retrieve statistics or things like that. And something very easy to operate. So what does that mean? Um, the OpenStack stack is mainly in Python and uses pretty simple technologies that we know for a long time, like uh, SQL or uh, messaging queues or things like that. There's no big things like Hadoop or Cassandra or things based on in Java, for example, and nobody wants to install that in our world, at least. So what was the blocker for us? Uh, because we took a look at existing solutions, uh, such as Graphite, which is deployed a lot, but it's not scalable. Uh, some of, of it is in Python, and I wrote a nice blog post a couple of years ago about how not to write Python. You can take a look at uh, the code from Graphite. It's pretty reliable. Uh, it's not modulable. Uh, InfluxDB was a new cool kid in town. Uh, it's written in Go, but it doesn't work. It has gone uh, proprietary in part last year, so it's not really open source anymore, and it doesn't scale. Uh, OpenGSDB is another solution. You need to set up Hadoop. You have new uh, things since a couple of years, like uh, Prometheus, uh, which I think uses Cassandra, which is not an option for us, uh, too, because nobody wants to set up Cassandra on your Hadoop, nor anything like that. So. We had to create something from scratch, uh, which we call Gnocchi. Um, it's part of the OpenStack project, but it's really not part of OpenStack um, in terms of dependencies. It works on the run by default. Uh, it's like a standard database. Uh, so we designed it in a way where it is easy to install because you can use pip to install it, which is a very big difference in a lot of other software. It's written in Python. It's free software. Uh, we also put, um, which is something that you, that you don't see very often, a uh, very strict documentation policy, where we force developers to write documentation before merging anything, which works pretty nice. We have a pretty good documentation. 
and obviously it was designed to be distributed and resilient to failure, which is standard in the cloud system. And it has a lot of awesome features. I'm not going to explain all of those features today because it will be way too long, but uh, it does a lot of things. It's integrated with standard tools such as CollectD, uh, Nagios, uh, STSD, GraphOut, those kind of things. Uh, and it offers a REST API that you can uh, work against. Uh, so we'll, I will show you just after. So what you need to do uh, to learn to use uh, Nuki and how does it work? So there's a few um, data type that you need to, to know about it. You will see in the API being used. So the metric, uh, the orange one, is pretty obvious that these are the time series where you store the metrics in Nuki. So this is pretty easy to understand. Uh, in Yoki, everything is pre-aggregated. So everything, when you send metrics to the database, to Yoki, is going to compute things like the minimum, the maximum, the average, all these kinds of things in advance. So when you want to retrieve them, it's very fast to retrieve them, which is something that we needed uh, because waiting for minutes to do the computation each time you want to uh, draw a chart on the screen is not something that is very useful. So, and how you control this aggregation is defined by the archive policies. So in an archive policy, you're going to set, well, I want to compute the average, the minimum, the maximum, all these kind of things, or the percentile, and I want to keep the data for a year, for example, and I want to do this kind of aggregation every five minutes, every hour, or every day, or whatever. So you configure this in archive policies. All of this data model here uh, can be manipulated using the API, the REST API. And all of these metrics where you store your data, it's not really obvious or to reach with them. Like when you measure a lot of things, uh, let's say a few hundred, a few thousands of uh, virtual machines, you have, a lot, you have a lot of time series stored in the database. But you want a way to organize them, to query them, to find them again. So what we, we did is to create uh, resources. So resources, it's exactly like um, classes uh, in uh, Python. We have resource type where you declare type of resource, for example, an instance, a virtual machines. Uh, you declare attributes uh, like the host it's running on, uh, the flavor, uh, these kind of things. And you can instantiate them as a resource and you can link metrics against them. So for example, uh, you can call a metric a CPU, memory usage, or if your resource is an application, you can uh, have a metric which is the number of visitors. And all of this is stored into an index. So the index is uh, in charge of keeping those relationships that I drew just on the slide before in a storage system. So we have free storage system in Yuki. This is the architecture. It's not really a very simplified, it's actually how it works. It's, it's pretty simple. Uh, so you have the users talking to the API, which is a REST API. It's nothing very complicated. Uh, and when you send measure, we are going to be stored in a temporary storage, which we call the measure storage. It's usually the same one that the metric storage, but it can be different. And uh, you have another process, which is called metric D. Uh, so you just have to follow the um, red arrows here. And the metric D process is in charge of getting these new measures out of the storage, compute the new aggregation, the new average, the new minimum, the new maximum, for each of the um, Guarantee you configure in the archive policies and store them back into the metric storage. So the metric storage is a long term storage. And all of this is stored in the index, uh, which is the last piece of storage uh, of Nuki. So we have three different storage, which are diff three different technologies behind. Uh, why? Because, well, it's all different data model. Uh, having everything stored, for example, in SQL wouldn't work. Uh, storing uh, millions of points of uh, timestamps in uh, a table in SQL is not really an option and not really scalable. Um, metric D itself, uh, so both the API and metric D, the demand uh, doing the computation are scalable. You can run any amount of uh, demand that you want and you need. And they're all um, coordinated with something that we call a coordinator, which I'll talk just after, uh, which is also something we, we built um, in Python to help us. So it's a different storage. Uh, the index 
is uh, currently it's a driver system. So if you saw the talk just uh, before mine, which was talking about decoupling, we do a lot of that in OpenStack in general. Like we did that in Nuki. So uh, everything is driver based. So we have a driver for the index storage, and it's currently the only driver is uh, a driver with SQL Alchemy. Uh, we do leverage a lot of features in PostgreSQL. So we do recommend that one, but it's also worth in MySQL. And the uh, storage for uh, measures is either uh, plain files, if you don't need any scalability, or Ceph, which is our best storage driver because uh, Ceph offers the best performances for uh, storage. And we also have Swift, which is a object store uh, equivalent to S3 at uh, Amazon that we do uh, know how to use too. Uh, very less efficient, but they do work well also and very, very scalable. You can store hundreds of terabytes on those kind of storage. Uh, we have uh, two magic libraries that we use in Gnocchi. So the first one is Kerbona. It's not right now a standalone library. Uh, it's a library that is embedded in uh, Gnocchi for now because the API changes a lot. It's based on Pandas and, and NumPy. So, uh, we started with uh, Pandas uh, a couple of years ago, which is very good because it's very easy to write any kind of statistics, any kind of uh, computing you want on your time series, but it's very slow. It's very, very slow. Uh, when you, when you metric D, the human responsible for doing the computation does a lot of this kind of computation over and over again, and using Pandas is, is quite slow. So we're slowly rewriting uh, the part of Pandas that we use in Carbonara using NumPy, which is way faster. Um, but it's, it's a very good start. I mean, having Pandas helps us a lot, having something working from the beginning. Uh, and we also use uh, another library that we created a couple of years ago, and it's uh, Tooze. So Tooze is, again, an abstraction layer. We do love that uh, against all of kind of things, MMKHD, Zookeeper, SQL, uh, ATCD. So it provides two things. First, it's a distributed log management. So it does not provide itself the, the distributed log, but it can leverage MMKHD or Zookeeper or ATCD or whatever. Even MySQL works uh, for doing a, a GLM uh, distributed log. Um, so you don't have to uh, when we created Nuki, we had, we had um, for the coordinator part that I showed earlier, we need a distributed log just to say, oh, I'm working on this metric and I need to log this metric for a while uh, during the computation. And we had the option to depend on something um, like Zookeeper, which is pretty resilient, scalable. But if you say to users and operators deploying uh, software that you want to uh, depend on uh, Zookeeper, they're not going to install your software because they don't want to run Zookeeper. There are a few operators that would be happy to run Zookeeper because they already have a cluster system using it, but most of the time they don't want to use it. And same goes for the developers. If you say to them, wow, you want to test your software? I mean, you want to test your key? Well, you need to deploy the keyboard on your laptop. They're not going to be happy. So we have this abstraction layer tools, which allows us to configure uh, dynamically in the software. Well, I have a Zookeeper available, so that's pretty solid for production use, and you can use it. But if you don't have Zookeeper, you can just spawn memcached and it will work the same way. You can actually write a pretty poor distributed lock uh, in memcached. It also provides another uh, set of primitives, which is the group membership. So that's pretty um, um, helpful to actually manage a group of processes in Python. If you have a group of processes uh, spread across a lot of nodes uh, doing uh, computation of things or um, distributing jobs, basically, if you have jobs you want to distribute across a lot of processes, across a lot of nodes, uh, tools can help you with that. So it works with uh, a lot of, oops, a lot of, um, other drivers like um, MKHD, same thing, Zookeeper, or uh, it doesn't work in MySQL or PostgreSQL yet, but uh, it's pretty easy to have uh, groups of, uh, of nodes to do the same thing and distribute it. So now, how to use it? So it's pretty easy. Uh, you can use uh, pip to install it, so there is a, a server and a client. Uh, we use a favorite system in pip to uh, deploy it, so you can. Uh, 
You can, uh, between the brackets, say which driver you want to use, which will install the right dependency, so it won't install all the dependencies. So, uh, Nuki bracket file PostgreSQL is going to install the file driver dependencies and the PostgreSQL dependencies. The client, you just have to uh, edit the configuration file where you have to change like a couple of lines only because everything works by default. Uh, the upgrade script uh, creates the first data in the um, SQL database. And then you have only two demons to run and you can run any amount uh, of worker for these demons on any number of nodes, which is the REST API and the metric D uh, demon. Uh, once you've done that, you can use, uh, so the stage is pretty small, sorry, but there's a lot of outputs, so you can use the um, uh, Nuki command light tool to, uh, the first command is uh, Nuki archive policy list, so this one just lists the archive policies, so there's three by default uh, with less or more or less retention, uh, based on what you need, and on the right you can see the execution messages which are used, like standard deviation, number of points, uh, 95 percentile, minimum, maximum, etc. And the second command is new metric create uh, dash dash archive policy name low. So that's just used to create a new metric. So once you do you do that, uh, you have a new metric. Uh, with, with ID is just there, so it's a UUID which is created for you by Nuki, and you can use this UUID here to just on a, a bunch of measure. So that's what this command does here. It's, it's at measure, here you have the timestamp and the values to this UUID just before, and then you can request to show the measure, and you see here that uh, by default it's returned the average, so the average has been computed for the whole day here, for the whole hour, and for the two five minute slots that we sent here. Um, same thing, you can look at here the minimum, so the smallest value is 22, which is there too, so it works. Um, uh, 42 is the minimum interval for this five minutes here, it's this point here, so that works. Uh, and it also computes percentile, so if you want, if you do network stuff, it's useful most of the time. Uh, network people love to have uh, 95 percentiles. Uh, as I said, all these kind of metrics, they can be pretty hard to uh, retrieve to organize. So we have our uh, resource system here. What we do is to recreate a resource type. Here, there's, there's a basic resource type, which is called generic, that we can use. Uh, it's like the object class in Python. It's just a standard object. Here, I create a server resource with uh, two attributes, uh, a name, which is a string, and a host, which is a string too. Um, I'm going to create here a resource whose name is uh, WW42. The host, uh, it's hosted on its computer one, and two metrics, CPU and memory. The so type is a server, which is the type I created here. And I'm going to generate here a UID because you have you can pick the UID you want uh, for your resources. So the UID of the metrics are created directly by uh, and you keep it for the resources you can supply your own ID, which is useful if your uh, objects already have IDs uh, in an outside system. And here it returns the object you have created. Uh, then you can obviously update the resource. So that happens a lot. For example, in the cloud computing uh, system, is that when you create an instance, you have to move it at some point to another host. Uh, that happens a lot. So in this example, it's what I've done. It's I change the uh, attribute host from compute one to compute two, uh, saying oh the server has moved to another uh, computer. So the attribute here is updated. And I can then retrieve the history of the resource. So I have a whole timeline of the history, which is stored here. It's uh, in this case I asked in a JSON format, and I just have here uh, the first as compute one. I have the revision end and start, which indicates at which uh, part of the timeline this object is exists. Um, same thing here. It changed to compute two at this time here. So I can retrieve the whole history of a resource object, which is pretty handy. Um, since my object has metrics attached to it, I created two metrics, CPU and memory. I can directly send metrics uh, measures to the CPU of this resource here. And same thing, I can show this value back, which are shown here. 
uh, like I said, there's a lot of features. So obviously, we have a database with all of this information in it, and you can do any kind of lookup. Uh, I'm doing a simple search based on, say, on the host. Those are all the servers that run on compute too, and I do this with my server here. You can do any kind of query in the history of the resources too. Uh, you can do search in the metric value too, so if you want to retrieve the list of servers that uh, used too much CPU, you can just send a query to Nuki to retrieve it. Uh, it's not tied to only infrastructure, so in our context in OpenStack, we do uh, talk a lot about instances, volumes, and networks, but it's actually applicable to any kind of resources. If you have an application, a website with visitors or anything, you can use all this system to create your own and your own uh, metrics. So this is how to use it in Python. So it's pretty simple. Uh, you just have to use the SDK, which is Nuki Client, which is on uh, PyPI. Uh, first thing, you create cl a client, so specifying the uh, URL of um, the API, and then you can create a metric with just one call, uh, add a measure, add a resource, create a resource here. Um, here yeah, I just created a generic resource which is, exists by default. So it does not have any uh, attributes, just an ID. I used um, a string here, uh, a matrix, the number of visitors, and I'm going to send the number of visitors for these different timestamps. And I can retrieve them here, and it will return the list of metrics. So I just sent a couple of metrics here, and I retrieve them here. And the equivalent uh, new key clients, um, Common is just here. Uh, it has Grafana support, so I'm not sure you can see it, but it's it's Grafana. We have a plugin in Grafana, which is uh, pretty easily uh, easy to uh, in, to install uh, from the Grafana repository, uh, and you can plug to a uh, Nuki data source um, in just a, a few clicks and build for the dashboard to show any kind of metrics that you have in your infrastructure or application. Uh, so that's it. We have pretty good uh, documentation uh, on Nuki.xyz. It's hard to find TLD these days. And we have a IRC channel if you want to hang out and ask any question. And that's it. Thanks.